Well, as I shared yesterday, uh, one of the great privileges of my life is being a dad. And uh, many of you know my kids. Some of you have seen them maybe uh, around already. But that's my daughter, Lane, and my son, Evan. And one of the things that, that I love about being a dad is that usually in the morning, uh, you know, I'll be up maybe having a cup of coffee and, and, and I'll hear footsteps coming down the hallway. And, and I'll listen for a moment and I can usually tell which one it is based on the pace, you know, of their footsteps. And Evan's usually moving a little faster and I know what they're doing. And so a smile comes to my face because when they get up in the morning, they sort of instinctively seek us. Right? I know that when I hear those footsteps, they're looking for me or preferably mom. All right? Especially Evan. All right? Stereotypical mama's boy. He, in fact, he wants to marry his mom. So we actually have a little battle going on right now. He uh, has said that he wanted to fight me for her. And then uh, he also said if I die, he's going to marry her. So that may change and hopefully will change over time. But you know, I, I think... Yes, I hope it changes. I think it's really sort of a beautiful picture, though, of God's desire for you and I. Right? He desires that we, as His children, right? right? We talked about relationship yesterday. We talked about how God gives us a relationship with Him. He gives us eternal life knowing Him. Right? And, and in that relationship, I believe that God desires and God longs for us to seek Him. And just like our kids seek us in the morning, they, they want to know that we're there. Right? They, they want to know that we are present. Right? They want to know that they're not alone. In, in just the same way, I believe that God desires that we would seek Him. He, we talked yesterday a little bit about seeking God, and we said that it requires our mind's attention and our heart's affection. This morning I want to move on and, and give you a new word as we think about this, and I want to think about the word presence. Presence. As we continue this journey of, of talking about what it means to be a God seeker, what it means to, to seek after God, I want us to think about what it does it mean, what does it look like to seek the presence of God. And, and we sort of addressed this why issue yesterday, and we want to kind of come back to that right now and say, well, if God is always with me, right, if there's nowhere that I can go, that, that I cannot escape His presence, if God has promised to never leave me or never forsake me, why is it that we would seek His presence. And what does that look like and what does that mean? Well, I, I think we get a little bit of, of help from uh, the, the Hebrew language when it comes to the word presence because to seek someone's presence, literally it meant to seek their face. To seek their face. And to seek their face meant to be able to come before them. And so to have an audience with someone, to, to be before their face meant that you were granted access to their presence. And I, and I want us to, to think about that this morning, that, that you and I ha have been granted access into the very presence of God. And God desires that we would seek His presence. And just because we, we, we have Him with us all the time, as we said yesterday, does not mean that we're always in tune or aware of His presence. And so God calls us to be a people who seek His presence. And so what I want us to do this morning is to look at four verses, primarily, uh, we'll reference a few others, out of Psalm 105. And so if you have your Bible this morning, I want you to turn to Psalm 105, and, and we're going to look at the first four verses. And, and this is Psalm of David, and, and as he begins this psalm, this psalm, did I do that? No. Um, I did not do that. Another piano. Another piano. All right. I was like, I don't think, I was like, I don't think I could do that. I don't think I have those sort of powers. Um, in Psalm 105, as David begins this psalm, he's going to share some great insights into what it means to seek the Lord and, and, and to what it means to seek His presence. And he's going to sort of give us three things that we can do to experience and encounter the presence of God. And then he's going to give us a why. All right, And so we're going to look at what we can do practically to encounter the presence of God as His people. And then we're going to kind of dive into that why. So let's read it together, uh, or read with me, I, not out loud, but read along and, and I'll read it together. Psalm 105, uh, verses 1 through 4. Oh, give thanks to the Lord and call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him, sing praises to Him, and tell of all His wondrous works. Glory in His holy name, and let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His presence 
continually. And so David begins this psalm with this song of praise, and he begins it with a command and a call to thankfulness, to giving thanks. And so what I want us to see this morning is that the, the first thing that we can practically do in order to seek the presence of God is to give thanks. That, that the act of thanksgiving, the act of expressing our gratitude to God is actually a pathway to encountering and experiencing His presence. I don't know about you, but I, I had not always thought about, I mean, I always knew it was good to be thankful. Right? How many of you had moms or dads that made you say thank you? All right. Aren't you grateful for that? All right. So we, we teach our kids to use the word thank you as a manner. Right? We, we celebrate the holiday of Thanksgiving every year. Right? And we hear messages and this concept of being thankful. We know we should be thankful. Right? But Thanksgiving is actually an act of worship that allows us to experience the presence of God. It's an echo here of Psalm 100, and we're going to sort of reference Psalm 100 a couple times. In Psalm 100, verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and praise his name. And so if we are going to seek the presence of God, if, if we as his children who have been invited into relationship with him, we've been invited to know him, Right? We are called to be a thankful people. We are called to give thanks. And so I want to encourage you and I want to challenge you to, to think about expressing your thanksgiving, your, your thankfulness to God as a means of worship, as a means of encountering His presence. You know, so many times in life that we, we face discouraging or difficult situations. We feel overwhelmed. And, and, and sometimes, it's just in the middle of those times, if we just stop, and start to think of the things that we have to be grateful for, the things that we have to be thankful for, it'll begin to change your whole perspective. And so if we're going to be God seekers, if we're going to seek after our Heavenly Father, we begin with thankfulness and gratitude. And then David goes on in, in verse 2, back in Psalm 105, and he says, Sing to Him, sing praises to Him, tell of all of His wondrous works. So here I think David is giving us yet another insight Right into what it looks like to seek God. He says, we seek Him through giving thanks. We enter His presence with thanksgiving. And then he says, sing to Him. Worship Him with your voice. Music, singing is just one aspect of our worship. But it is a powerful, powerful aspect of our worship. And when we praise God, when we sing to Him, when we share His praises in song with our voices on our instruments... It is a powerful way that we enter the presence of God. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of His people. And when we worship Him, when we lift our voices to Him, there's ways that we encounter His presence, sometimes like none other. And so, as we think about being God-seekers, I want you to think about the, the, the privilege that we have. I mean, isn't it an incredible privilege that we have to worship God? Not just to sing songs about God, but to actually worship and to express our heart to Him in song, with our voices or on our instruments. And Peter reminded the church that, that this was part of their vocation. Right? And this was part of Israel's vocation. And, and, and so Peter, as he writes to the church, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he, he quotes from Exodus 19, and he, he takes the vocation of Israel, and he places it on the church, and he says, he says You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness. Right? That we, are, we as the people of God are called to be worshipers of God. Right? To proclaim the praises, the worthiness of the one who called us out of darkness. We're his people, chosen, adopted, accepted, and we're to be worshipers. And again, there's echoes of Psalm 100. Psalm 100 verse 2 says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Worship and expressing our praise to God is a means of encountering and experiencing His presence. So I want to encourage you to, to be a worshiper. But then he goes on in verse 3 and gives us another, another key aspect. He says, Glory in His holy name and let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. And so there's thanksgiving, there's worship through praise and singing, and then he says that we are to rejoice in the Lord. 
Now, I really appreciated uh, Caleb's testimony last night, and, and for you that were here last year and sort of tied that into what Mr. Raleigh shared about our feelings, right? But, but how many of you would agree that, that rejoicing is not always what you feel, right? All right, I think we can all agree that we don't always feel joyful, we don't always feel like rejoicing. And what I want you to realize about rejoicing in the Lord and, and, and what David is talking about here where he says glory in his holy name. And he says let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. It's not waiting for a feeling of joy to come. right? And sometimes feelings of joy do come in life. There are definitely joyful moments. But here he's saying I want you to choose to rejoice in God. I want you to choose, not, not based on your circumstances, not, not based on, on anything that's happened to you, but I want you to choose to rejoice in the Lord. And so I would say it like this, rejoicing in the Lord is often a spiritual act of faith based not on what we see or feel, but who God is. Right? Our, our rejoicing in God is not based on what I see or what I feel or what I'm experiencing, but it's based on who God is. And so if we are going to be a people who experience and seek after God, if we're going to be God seekers, and I believe God has called us to be that, then we have to be people who rejoice. So again, Psalm 100 is an echo for us of this same truth. Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. What an, ama you know, what an amazing reason to rejoice. I just want you to just think about that truth for a second. Right? He, says, he says, first of all, know that the Lord is God. Right? Sometimes there are moments in life where we just have to step back and say, I don't understand my circumstances. I don't understand what's happening or why this has happened or what I'm going through. But I just need to step back and say, God, I know that you're God. God, I, I know that despite what I'm feeling or experiencing or going through, you are God. And I acknowledge that. And then he says, he made you, right? And so I acknowledge he made us. And then he says, we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And it speaks of God's care and love over our lives. Right? And so we always have reason to rejoice. We always have reason to rejoice because God loves us. And we even, in a greater way, can read this psalm with more knowledge than even David had. Right? More knowledge than his original audience would have had because we know Jesus. We have experienced Jesus. And, and so we know that, that God saved us and He bought us and He's brought us into His kingdom. And we're His people. And so we have reason to rejoice. And, and when we participate in these three things, right, in thanksgiving, in worship and praise, in rejoicing in God, these are pathways to encountering and experiencing His presence, to coming before His face. And it's our call, it's our duty as God's children to do that. But I want us to dive a little further now into verse 4. Because I want us to think about the why. Right, how many of you are, again, we talked about asking why yesterday, but how many of you are people that if you don't know the why, if you don't know why you're doing something, you don't want to do it? Anybody like that? Alright, and, and I think that's a good thing. I think that's a very good thing. We should always ask why. Why? Right, why do I do this? Why do I, why, what is the urgency of this? Is this just something I should do or I could do? Would it just be nice if I did this? Should I do this occasionally? Why do I need to do this? And in verse 4, I think we really get into the heart of, of that. And, and that's because we all experience weakness. Now, we don't, how many of you like to talk about your weaknesses? <laughs> I got one hand going, I got a half hand, one went up and one went down, like, oh no, no, wrong question, right? <laughs> we don't like to talk about our weaknesses. I certainly don't like to talk about my weaknesses, right? We don't like to talk about our weaknesses. But look at what, uh, look at what verse, look at verse 4, and I'm not going to put it up on the slide, but look, look at, in, in your Bible, look at verse 4 of Psalm 105. It says, seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His presence continually. Why do we seek God? Why do we need to seek His presence? Why do we seek to come before His face? Why come in thanksgiving? Why come in our worship of song? Why come in rejoicing in God? 
And it's because we need His strength. Because despite the fact that we don't like to talk about it, and despite the fact that we often do everything that we can to cover up and hide and bury our weaknesses, we are people who are weak. And you and I need God's strength. There are moments in life where that becomes more apparent than others. Right? There, are, there are moments where we are, are sort of very, very much in tune and aware of how desperately we need His strength. But there isn't a day that goes by. There isn't an hour that goes by in our lives that we don't need the strength that God supplies. And so David said, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. That first word, seek, right? That, that first word that he uses for seek means to pursue or to search, to ask. Right? How many of you ever searched for something? All right? Any of you prone to losing things, misplacing things? All right. Some of us are very prone to that. Right? Others of you, how many of you would say, no, I, everything's always in the same place. I always put it back. I know everything is. I'm super organized. How many of you are there? All right. We have like three people who are super organized. All right. The rest of us are a mess. All right. But we all are familiar with searching. Right? And seeking. And, and, and so David uses this word. He says, we are to search. We are to seek. We are to pursue. To ask for His strength for our weaknesses. Culture says that weakness is a liability. Right? Our, our culture says that, that weakness is not something to be talked about or celebrated because it's a liability. And None of us like to talk about or think about our weaknesses, but here's something I, I want you all to know. Right? That your weakness, right, your place of struggle, your place of pain, your place of hurt, is the perfect place for God's strength to be at work. Th that our weaknesses, our brokenness, are the perfect place for the power of God to be to put on display in our lives. And that's why we need to seek the presence of God. The Apostle Paul uh, who we think of as, as somebody who's super strong and super spiritual. How many of you kind of ever thought about Paul that way, right? I mean, just all the stuff that he did, these missionary journeys, his faith, his boldness. But this is what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 uh, through 10. He said, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, God had given him this vision. And he said, In, in order to be, not be conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I, I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But He said, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Notice that. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. For that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That's a tremendous, tremendous insight that God gave to Paul. And Paul has passed on to the church. And it's a, a completely upside down way of looking at our weaknesses. I mean, look at what he said. Well, he says, first of all, that this whatever, we don't know what it was, right? Paul does not tell us what it was. And I believe that was on purpose, absolutely, right? Because it isn't the point of the passage, right? Because it could be anything. But we do know for Paul, he says that it was spiritual. He said it was a messenger of Satan. He was under spiritual attack. That word torment literally means to strike with a fist. He says it was a thorn in my flesh, right? How many of you ever had a thorn in your flesh? All right, painful or not? Painful. All right. So it was painful. It was spiritual. And it was very, very much tormenting him. And Paul seeks God. Right? He, he seeks the face of God. He seeks the presence of God. And what does he do? He begs God to what? Take it away. And maybe you can identify. I know I can identify where I have just begged God to change my circumstances. Because they were too much. Or so I thought. And Paul says, I can't do this. I can't handle this. And, 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 and he wanted God to take it away, but he said, this is what God did for me instead. He spoke to me and reminded me that His grace was sufficient. Right? That, that word sufficient means filled with unfailing strength. 
He says, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient, listen, for you. For you, it's sufficient. Not just for other people, for you. He says, my power is made perfect in weakness. So Paul says, now, now I, I he says, I boast, I brag about my weaknesses. He's like, I, I just go around and talk about how weak I am. Can you imagine if we did that? Right? Man, I am so weak. I am so messed up. I've got so many problems, right? Imagine if we did that. But that's what, what Paul did. And he said, he said, here's why. He says, because when, he says, Christ's power may rest on me. He says, I delight in my weaknesses. I don't know if I'm there yet. Honest moment. I'd like to be. He says, I delight in my weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. We need strength. Listen, I don't know all that you're going through right now. I don't know all that's happening in your life. I don't know all that happened right before you came to camp or what's been going on in your life this past year or what's happening right now. All of our stories are different. But I know some of you have, are walking through some very difficult things, some painful things, some hard things. But I know that all of us have weakness and all of us have difficult moments. And so we need to be people who seek God. Because more than anything else, we need to come before the face of our God and seek His strength and His grace to help in our time of need. As we think about what he said in Psalm 105.4, that second word where he says, Seek the Lord and His strength, and he said, Seek His presence. It's a little bit different word there. It's not the same word for seek. And, and this word implies a searching by worship and prayer to beg or to desire. It's a very intense word. And so he says, he says, when, he says when, he's saying, when he's saying seek his presence, he's saying through worship, through prayer, through great desire, seek his presence. Come before him. And, and I want you to know, I can, I can personally tell you that there have been times in my life where I've been brought to that place. And one of those times I can think about was uh, just over three years ago. I, I was in the middle of a, a difficult transition in, in life and in ministry. I had resigned the church that I was serving at after some difficult circumstances. We didn't sort of know what was coming next. And, and there were just some moments of, of, of stress and anxiety and all those things that go along with that. And I remember one day I was, I was driving across town in my car and I just, I just thought, I, 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 don't, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. And, and, and God uses so many different things to speak into our life, but I flipped on the radio station and, and, and a song written by uh, Matt Marr called, Lord, I Need You, a little chorus, some of you know it. And it came on, and I'm telling you, God used that, that little thing in that moment to remind me that, that, yes, this was too much for me, but it was not too much for Him. And that I could cry out to Him and I could seek His presence and I could seek His face and say, Lord, I need You. I need You. I, I am desperate without You. And I can promise you that, that God's strength is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for our weakness. We have, we have the beautiful privilege of reading Psalm 105. Again, as I said earlier, in a greater way than the original audience could even read it. Because we read it knowing the fulfillment of many, well, many of the Psalms talked about, which is that God was going to send a Messiah, a deliverer, a rescuer. And God did send His Son, Jesus. And Jesus has broken down the wall of separation that existed between man and God. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. And that symbolized that access to God was now available because of His death on our behalf. And we can seek His presence with full acceptance because of who Jesus is and what He's done. So I want to ask you this morning a question for you to think about. Are you weak? Are you weak? Are you struggling? Are you hurting? Are you overwhelmed? Maybe it's a habit that, that, that you've got that, that you just can't get rid of. And it's a sinful habit. And, and, and you're, you wish and you've asked and you bet. But you need to seek the face of God. You need His strength. Maybe it's anxiety, right? Anybody ever have an anxious moment or two? All right. Depression. Struggle. It could be a family issue. 
hurting, overwhelmed. I don't know what it is, but God does, and His grace is sufficient. What you need more than anything else is an encounter with the presence of God. To seek His face. To, to come before Him with thanksgiving. To worship Him in song. To rejoice in Him. But then to pour out your heart before Him. To, to know His strength for your weakness. I want you to know something. God cares about your weaknesses. Right? God does not eliminate all of our problems. He does not eliminate all of the challenges. He did not, you know, Paul begged God. He says, God, please take this away. But it was not God's purpose to take it away. And sometimes God does not take it away. But that does not mean that He does not care. That He is not affectionately concerned about us. He loves us so much, more than we could ever know or understand. And God cares. And He wants to meet you in your weakness. And He wants to provide His unfailing strength. And so I want to encourage you to seek His face. And then I want to encourage you that when we have sought His face, because more than anything we need Him, that God will often lead us and direct us to, to tell somebody. Because one of the ways that God ministers His grace is through people. Aren't you thankful for that? One of the things that I love about this place is that it really truly is a family. Right? We are family. Of course, we are family in Christ, right? Brothers and sisters in Christ. So we are all related. But there's a special atmosphere of family here. And God did not intend for you to do life alone. God did not intend for you to walk through that weakness alone or isolated. Not only is He with you, but He wants to put people in your life through whom He can touch you and encourage you and help you. And so I want to encourage you this morning, if there's weakness in your life, if there's something that, that is overwhelming you, something that, that you don't know what to do, I want you, first of all, before anything, to seek the face of God and to seek His grace, which is sufficient. But I also want you to tell somebody. Talk to your counselor, talk to me, talk to your faculty member. Right? We, we are here for you. And we don't want you to have to walk through that alone. We want to encourage you and help you. You are in a safe place. Listen, when you share about your weakness, no one's going to look down at you. No one's going to think less of you, right? Because we all admitted we're weak, right? We all have weakness. Don't hide it. Let God meet you in that place. I want to just then encourage you practically to practice what we've talked about. Because it's fine to talk about God's Word, but if we don't do it, We've wasted our time. So here's what I want you to do today. I want you to take some time to just be grateful. And for you, maybe if you're a journaler or you like to write things down, maybe just take some time today before you go to bed tonight to write some things down that you're grateful for. Maybe take some time today just, just to express, God, I am thankful for and thank Him. I, I want to encourage you to just take some time today to express your praise to God through song. Now, we get to do that together a lot. And that's wonderful. We'll do that tonight in sing time, and I look forward to that so much. But maybe, maybe just today, somewhere where you're alone, maybe in your practice room or somewhere where people don't think you're crazy, right? But just sing to God. Just sing a hymn to Him, a song to Him, and worship Him. Today, I want to encourage you to rejoice in God and just say, God, I, I choose to rejoice in You because of who You are and what You've done for me. And if you do those things, you will experience his presence. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, I thank you so much that you are God who has made a way for us to know you, to have relationship with you. And God, I pray that you would birth in our hearts a desire to seek you like never before. Father, I pray for each, uh, each student, each counselor, each faculty member this morning, each staff person here. Father, you alone know their hearts and you know their weaknesses even better than they do. And God, I pray today that, that they, you might lead them to seek you so that they might find your unfailing strength for that place in their life, that you might touch and heal and help. And God, I pray that you would give courage to all of us to be honest about our weaknesses with someone so that we can get the encouragement and the help that we need. And Father, I pray that, that in that you might be glorified. Father, I pray that we would never forget that our weaknesses are the perfect place for your strength to be put on display in our life. That our weaknesses are not a liability, but Father, they are the absolute place where you put your glory and power on display in our lives. So Lord, help us to run to you with them. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.